The FF Dynasty presents Married to the Game for your pleasure. Well, I don't know if it's a good way to start the show or a bad way to start the show, but we are going to start the show with a Cleveland Brown. How do you feel about that? Did you say shart the show? <laughs> he said he sharted. With the Cleveland Browns. I sharted. I'm really ready for them to be better. I don't know <laughs> if it's ever going to happen, but they do have some players in their team that have some fantasy relevance, so let's uh, see if we... If, we, if we're in, right? We got some Corey Coleman's. We got some Corey Coleman. and 73 on the current ADP. There's some talks of a possible prior return. There's been rumblings of a Coleman trade, which would be okay with me. If you Obviously. wanted to get yeah. rid of Coleman, that's fine. Um, as Jay Wayne mentioned, he's at ADP of 73 for February here. Um what do, you, what do you guys make on I, I'm personally not really down on him too much. He's, he's obviously been a little banged up through the first couple of years. When he's had his chances, it's, it's been pretty decent. Obviously, Josh Gordon came back at the end of last year, like we talked about last week. They kind of force-fed him some balls. It would kind of hurt uh, old Corey Coleman last year at the end of the season when he did come back. Yeah, uh, yeah so three straight games with one catch to end the year, 15, 16, 17. Right, and, and you know, not the best quarterback play and not the best situation, so... You know, but how do you still guys a feel? solid ADP here, right? So it's crazy because there's he but really it's, hasn't it's done not solid if you bought him last right, year. Right, it's slowly been deteriorating. I here. think it's, it made its way up to 24 at one point. I was looking at the history on the yeah. DLFs and it made it to 24 at some point. I don't know. Exactly it's hanging when on. It was, but it's hanging on. <clears throat> still hanging on, but but he hasn't really done much. I mean, there's 56 catches over the past two years. Um, he's missed 13 games in the last two seasons. Uh, broke his hand, required surgery in 16. Broke the same hand, I believe, in 17 that required surgery. Sports injury predictor said that it was the same hand, but I've gotten burned by them before on this podcast because they had the wrong data. So I don't know, but he did break his hand twice, two different years. Um, but he missed the first six, seven games of last season and then comes out versus Jacksonville, one of the best pass defenses in the league. Well, he played week six, one and two. Well, sure, but then he missed seven yeah. games, right? Comes at, comes back, first game versus Jacksonville, puts up six for 80. Now, this was before Josh Gordon, but like that's a solid score to come back after breaking your hand against one of the best pass defenses in the league with, on playing for the Browns. Yeah, agree. I had, agree. I had agree. picked him up and stashed him a few weeks before that in a redraft league and was scared to death to play him in the Jacksonville game and then fired him up the next game and, you know, wasn't a, ter- wasn't a terrible day, but it wasn't what I was expecting after a nice day against the Jaguars. And then, Jesus, the game after <laughs> that. Yeah. Goose egg. <laughs> He's only had one game over 100 yards his whole career, which is kind of like there's a lot of reasons to be down on this guy, but for some reason I, I'm still interested. I'm still down to, to put him on my team. The physical traits are great, and that's what's keeping him at the 74. Obviously – you know he's a vertical threat. He's a burner. If you can put a decent quarterback and another good receiver on on the other side of him, you would have to think that Corey Coleman can eat and and, and do his thing. Yeah, he hasn't he hasn't Kevin Whited or Brashad Perriman. Mm-hmm. You know he's still hanging on. But and coming out, he was my favorite wide receiver. I'm not you know I'm, in that particular draft in class. that draft class. He was he was I really really liked him a ton. Not gonna pretend like I didn't. And it's just one of those things like. You you get hurt. Is he is he got the Keenan Allen syndrome? Is he going to come back? Not that he's a PPR monster like Keenan Allen, but he's a big play guy. The six for eighty, the five for fifty three for a touch just this year with Deshaun Kaiser throwing him the ball, the rookie. Uh, and then the year before, you know, before he gets hurt or in between, he comes back, scores some decent points, and gets had hurt like again. one good game his rookie right. year that the sustained big, the, his the, value throughout the, the two touch. That, but he showed he flashed like that two touchdown sure. big play. But what you thought he could do coming out. He showed it to you, but it's just such a small sample size at this point because he's hardly on the field. It's it's just one of those things where how much more of this can you take? Sure. I I will say this. I mean, he's at 73, but like you just mentioned, he was your favorite receiver in that draft class. I mean, Sterling Shepard has come out and and had two nice years by all accounts and is 12 picks ahead of him, 13 Uh, picks ahead of him. Good point. So this ADP is staying pretty strong. I'm not saying that that's really worth too much, but I mean, his value is staying, you know, right up there with Sterling Shepard, who's actually been on the field and proving himself and, you know, Seems to, you know, you know what I'm saying here? Yeah, ex- especially this time. This is February ADP because Mar- it's March 3rd. March isn't out yet. Uh, um, like, and you just mentioned a guy a couple of picks ahead of him that was in the same draft class. And in front of that, 
draft class was Devontae Parker, who has done nothing but let his people down year after year after year. But he's at 74, right behind Corey Coleman. It's potential season. Mm -hmm. In February, your ADP, it's all potential. And that's that's what happens. And Corey Coleman is filled with potential. Still is. We haven't seen him go out there and not be good. He's good when he's out there. He's just not out there much. So the potential were capital P. He's still got a ton of potential. and But obviously he's a Cleveland Brown, so when he's been out there, it's been hard to get a decent target thrown his way. And the biggest thing we just mentioned briefly and then got past it because we were trying to get just get going on him and get revved up here, Josh Gordon comes back just demanding targets. And then if Pryor goes over there, we kind of mentioned it last week when we talked about Pryor, the three of them on one team in Cleveland, that's a that's disaster. It can't it's, it can't be great. Maybe they do get one of these free agent quarterbacks who can help them out because Hugh, maybe. Hugh was saying how he didn't want to start a rookie, and then you bring Todd Haley in, who is a pretty decent and well respected offensive mind, and I, I'm kind of interested to see what he can do with this team. They they if they can get a quarterback, they could have a good offense. But I could see what you're saying. It could be. You know, a little, I mean, a little, as you like to say, a little muddy over there with those three guys, and it's the Browns, and and to hope that all that turns around that quickly is probably a little bit of a. Uh, well, he's twenty. Guys, he, yeah. he's, he's twenty three. Calvin Ridley's about to be drafted. He's twenty three. Sure, you know what I mean. So if oh. if 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 Pryor goes over there, and about buddies, to turn twenty four. Okay, well, but, yeah, exactly. I didn't. I'm not looking at birthday here, but twenty three point seven. July, is where he's at. close enough. Well, so you get what I'm saying. He's still he's super sure. young, super potential. Uh, it's just. So you guys in or out at 73? We'll start with Jay Wayne over there. I think uh, I don't know that you're going to see the dividends right away, but it's dynasty. I'm, I'm in. I'm still in. I think and I think I take him over Devontae Parker as well at 74 there. I don't, I don't know. That's a whole nother discussion. I don't know if you want to answer that well, question I think, as well. I think we'll I think right I, there. I know at least I'm probably going to say this on a couple of guys here and I'm going to spend it on my first guy here. But Corey Coleman's the type of guy who it, ain't, it isn't going to take but two or three games yep. before and, and have, have, him having some decent games because there's a ton of people who liked Corey Coleman and obviously his value staying strong before the values right back up to the fifties, forties, thirties, just, just in a couple of games, I think the value will shoot back up. See, I knew Corey Coleman was right, good. Right. And so, you know, Completely maybe you get in there at 73 and maybe you, you could do a, a, a quick flip around in the beginning of the season or hold him. So I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued, like you said, by the potential, and I think I'm okay with 73. This is this is a, a decent discount for him. I think I like him more than Devontae Parker at this point. For me personally, I'm going to take Sterling Shepard and probably pass on both of these guys. But best thing that could happen to him is is that Pryor comes over. They feel a little bit crowded over there. They trade to Corey Coleman to anybody else. Best thing that could happen to him. And to that measure, if we're going to say, hey, you're on the clock and you got to make a pick here, I may slide on down. And, and if I'm going to put my stock in a young wide receiver, I might just slide on down and grab Chris Godwin. All right. Well, I mean, that, so you're basically saying that you're out at 73. I again, you if whoever bought Corey Coleman to begin with is upset. Whoever bought into him last year, being like, "Oh well, it's what it is, what it is," and we'll get him this year because he was hurting and two straight hand injuries, like it you, that could scare you. I would be buying Corey Coleman from a current owner. But in a startup, everything's different. You're blank slate. You're coming in here creating your team. I don't mind buying in at Corey Coleman's drop in value to a current owner with a team. I can package up a couple of guys I don't really yeah. like and try to pick him up. But in my startup draft, I'm probably not taking Corey Coleman at 73. I, I just I, I look at it as it's a deep. It's a, like I said. I mean, may, maybe I want to take Sterling Shepard a little further up the line here and, and probably take somebody else here just because I feel a little more comfortable. But at the point where you're taking him at at 73 or whatever that is. Um, I feel like it's a decent swing to take at that point. You've got a couple of guys, and depending on how how you built your roster, you're probably you you didn't you you got some you know some safe guys and maybe a home run or two in there, and then this is another guy who could potentially be sure. you know, no, a little like bit more said, of a fun kind of swing. Couple games, he shoots right back up the board. So five twelve is pick sixty, so that means six that seventy two is the end of the sixth round. So seventy three is the beginning of is seven one. Basically, 612 of 72. So, 7 1, the first pick in the seventh round. I mean, that's the cheapest you've gotten Corey Coleman in two years in Dynasty. And it Absolutely. could be a quick flip no doubt. Like and we could, just mentioned. So, a couple games he jumps I up. I think I'm okay way. with still buying in there. Yeah. 
All right. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned Chris Godwin. Let's let's go right to him next. He's at 81. You said you would take a chance on him. I think, you know, I was a little shocked to see the sticker price on him. We talked about Galladay on the last podcast. He's at 79 right above him. And then kind of Godwin, who are kind of in the same vein, I feel like right now as as players who are maybe on the rise. So, again, a little shocked, but this is pro- maybe the last time you're going to buy Godwin on a semi-reasonable price tag, question mark? Yeah, I, I remember a tweet coming out uh, a couple of months back from um, Brian McDowell saying, hey, Chris Godwin is such and such, and I believe it was in the hundreds or, or late 90s, and he was like, I guarantee he's moving up 30 spots, and sure enough, he did, and he was absolutely right. The thing about, like you said, we got Corey Cole, we got Chris Godwin down here, we had Devontae Parker right Galladay. there. Galladay. Galladay. The thing, the thing about like you, the sticker price on Chris Godwin right now, it looks high because that's where he started from in the back, and but because he was a second round rookie pick last year. But again, like look at what happened with Michael Thomas. He was nobody was picking Michael Thomas early in the draft picks, but he goes and plays with Drew Brees, blows up. He's a first round startup pick now. Like we don't really know about these young wide receivers until they get out there and start playing. And but but where you initially buy them, like the Corey Coleman's and the Devontae Parkers, they were up there in the second round, third round of startup picks. They haven't done anything on the NFL field, so they start to dwindle it back. And then you got the guys that start at the back, they get out there and do something and they start creeping up. But if they play with Drew Brees and catch a hundred balls, they go straight to the top. So like Chris Godwin has Jay Wayne, that was his boy last year coming in and we all liked him. I mean, who, how could you not like Chris Godwin after that, after that uh, bowl game where he was absolutely hard in the paint for Chris Godwin in the second round. If you listen to this show, you got him and now look, you got a solid asset. You're welcome. Yeah. No, but, well, I'm just saying, like, the, the sticker price, it, it is a little bit, it looks steep, but again, because that's just comparing to where you remember seeing sure. him at. If he would have started out in, in a little bit higher in the 60s and 70s of, a, of an ADP of a startup, and he would have just played a little bit at the end of the year and played good and stuck around, it wouldn't seem as bad. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't quite a favorable landing spot right off the rip because exactly. he was buried behind a couple of guys, but now, they like, just we, signed to Sean. He, he had, yeah, he, had, yep. he, he has now gotten on the field, and they're basically saying that they're having trouble keeping him off the field yep. and obviously you got Humphreys over there who plays the slot but he's probably maybe going to get out of the way here a little bit for some Godwin and and you know I well overall the numbers don't look spectacular 34 receptions for 525 yards just the one touchdown but he he didn't have too many snaps um like he I think he played half the snaps that Mike Evans played somewhere in like the 400s Mike Evans had like almost 800 or something I don't I, I looked at it and I didn't write them down but for all the reasons that we really liked him in 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 the coming out of college, are like the same reasons. Like he showed you, he showed you what you liked about him in the right NFL, on, right on the NFL, right. right on tape. Strong upper body helps him win contested, helps him win in contested situations. He's Which got, was was like the the holy grail about him, like the best right. contested catch guy ever. Yeah. And he's just like you said, it, he, yeah, it proved that theory on the couple of plays sure. that you saw him on. I went back and watched some of the games because they started giving him more snaps uh, later in the year. Um, and you see, you see the strong hands, both from a catching the ball perspective and from like jockeying for leverage with a cornerback. Like he's he can fight you off, and whether that's at the line of the scrimmage or whether it's you know, versus press coverage or whether it's at the top of a route, you saw him doing that. Um, he's got some yak ability. I think that's the, the, the score. His touchdown, he took like a screen to the house. Um, he can go up in the air and get it. Like there were parts of the year that you saw him do all of this and perform on the field. Similar argument that we made for Corey Davis where like the first couple games that he played, he really showed you a whole bunch of different things that, that made you right. feel good about right. what you thought felt about him before you saw him and then he confirmed a bunch of those feelings well like you said you mentioned it like the the total numbers for his year last year don't jump off the page but if you pull up his game log it's a tale of two cities over here like sure. the back half of that season is like oh we're about to use chris godwin i mean his numbers yeah. just jump off the page for we're that not very rookie. good let's see what we got exactly right. and because yeah exactly in the beginning of the season that the bucks were a completely different offense they tried a bunch of tight ends let's pound doug martin and deshaun watson stretch him deep that wasn't working and trying to different things they got the quarterback hurt like things fell off the rails and they were like bring in the young guy let's see what we got dude played great he's the opposite game log of like a cooper cup cooper cup comes right in there and he's just got steady numbers all year long mm. 
But sure you bring did. in, but you bring in Godwin at the end of the year, it's the back half of the year, and and he's looking real solid with some of these numbers. Left and a great taste in everyone's mouth. Week seventeen, you crushed remember. the Saints for seven and one hundred eleven and a touchdown. He was working that DB Crawley number twenty. It yeah. wasn't Lattimore. Lattimore was over there with yeah. Uh, but Crawley Mike had Evans, a good year. Was and he was torching Crawley. Most Just, of these numbers come with Ritzy Fitzy throwing in the ball. Fitzpatrick, you know exactly. Yeah, and a lot of well, Winston was playing that that last game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. but but true. I mean, it was it was just so good to see. And if you just look at the overall total, it's not going to give you the right impression. If you watch some of these games where he was getting work, he looked great doing it. Yeah, and I can I, understand why. Like looking at the ADP, it looks a little alarming. But like you said, to lead it off, Casey, is this the last chance you have before maybe he before right. it's too expensive? Before it's before it's expensive money. Right. So I mean, I like I like Chris Godwin. And uh, I'm ready. I'll take him if I, I have to, <clears throat> wherever I got to take him. I don't think you're going to get too many arguments from me if 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 I had a team and and it was around this this area and and I and I wanted to take a shot on on a younger guy who could possibly play dividends for me, just kind of like we talked about Corey Coleman just a second ago, and you mentioned Chris Godwin, and I I was kind of indifferent, but I'll, 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 either one of those guys, I'm okay with taking a shot on. Well. Everybody knows that listen to us. I will I will give young receivers a hard time because it's hard for them to produce for my lineup. And I'm not a big roster clogger fan. But in it, in a dynasty format, you have to allow for some of those youngsters sometimes. And in this scenario, that you have to I will sign off on Chris Godwin at this ADP. But you also have to understand that going into next year, you got Mike Evans, OJ Howard, potentially still having Cameron Bray. They got Deshaun Jackson who's asking to please get on the same page. They might have some running back that can catch the ball. You might not be plugging in Chris Godwin in your starting lineup next year. Right At away. Least you might not be. But and you know fair. what kind of you, – you are bringing in a solid asset who showed himself to be an NFL player at the end of the year, and he's got – uh, just to bet he's got college tape sure. to back up right. what you are buying into. And, so and I don't the, mind buying him, but just know that you're not buying a right. guy that you're going to plug right in versus you can buy somebody in this area that you could plug right in for production. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of what you, what you're weighing here. And that's maybe why the sticker price immediately shocked me when I saw him there because of that kind of reason, he's still slightly unproven. You liked what you saw in, in the game film spurts in, in spurts. there, kind of reconfirmed what you the liked about that him you liked about him. Right. Um, but to your you know to your point that you just mentioned with all those guys like Djax they brought him in because they were one of the lowest you know deep play teams in the league Jameis was pretty inaccurate in his deep balls last year Deshaun through no fault of his own couldn't get going last year he was open plenty of times and Jameis just missed him um, so you know they, like you said it could be a little while before Godwin really Works his way on, and I mean, you say what you want about Humphreys, but Humphreys plays yeah. a, plays a role and is I a pretty him. decent slot receiver. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not rushing out to grab Humphreys by any means on any team, but like, there's just certain guys on certain teams that play a role. Hum- Humphreys is a fantasy point spoiler because he'll take points from the guys you want to have in your lineup. Yeah, he's good. He's a good NFL player. He's not somebody you're trying to put in your lineup, but he's taking catches and points away from other people because he's solid. He's a solid player. Clemson guy. <laughs> Go Tigers. <laughs> but <laughs> the Bucks do have some decisions to make on on your former Tiger. There, he's a restricted free agent at the end of the, at at coming into this year, so they're gonna place a tender on him. I can't see anybody coming in and scooping him up. Um, you got Deshaun, who can they can get out of his contract of paying him like eleven million after this year and have zero, you know, money against the cap. And then Mike Evans in two thousand nineteen is a free agent, so. I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't obviously I don't think he's going anywhere, but you know, if we want to play the, the speculation game, yeah. maybe they believe in Chris Godwin and let Mike Evans walk, cut D Jacks and revamp this whole thing around <laughs> Godwin. I, I mean, yeah. go that far. Yeah. Yeah. Things have happened. <laughs> well, we know we talked about it last off season of how the Tampa Bay Bucks, they wait, they would actually run the ball and try to win football games. Something happened in 2017, and they were they went from like an even split on running and, and passing to the bottom of the league in rushing attempts and the number three team in passing attempts. Now, so, the defense was terrible, and they were behind in a lot of games. Well, and, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there because there's a lot of mouths to feed. Potentially, there's a lot of mouths to feed over there, and Jameis isn't exactly a prolific passer yet. Yeah. But he will throw it, and he'll sling it. And so just gunslinger mentality. Exactly. So they're, you know, a little wild yet, though. 600 attempts for the team, not Jameis, because he was hurt a couple games, but third in the league in attempts. They're 
Yeah, they might they might air it out a little more. Well, I mean, this is could be again it's last defense, chance. I, I, my, I don't I don't care about the Bucks defense for my fantasy team. I want the Bucks defense to be bad. I want to throw it all over the place. <laughs> right. You know. Well, you'd like a little more uh, controlled chaos from Jameis, <laughs> but yikes, that's a good term. If uh, controlled chaos. If I got to take a shot at Godwin at eighty one, I mean, I, I don't, I don't really have a problem doing so. Yeah. Just, to, just to wrap I'll, this thing up, I'll do it. Chris Godwin, I like it, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, let's take it to break. We'll be back with more Married to the Game podcast for your pleasure. You threw in the podcast, huh? Ooh, crispy, fresh pop. <laughs> just what we need to get back into this ADP discussion. Welcome back, everyone. If you'd like to join in. Uh, hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty, at Dynasty Big Co, at IMC Myers, at J Wayne's World for your pleasure. M Y E R S. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the combine is hot and heavy right now. We're not here to talk about that because it doesn't really matter. We're gonna keep going with the ADP. But I just wanted to point out, like, why is everyone running their forties wearing a chain? Like, what are you doing? You know who's not wearing a chain running the forty right now is Michael Crabtree because Talib took that shit. <laughs> so let's get into some Michael Crabtree. He's got an ADP of 85. We just got done talking about Chris Godwin, who, who's at 81. These two two different players going in opposite career trajectories at this point. Crabtree's approaching the wrong side of 30. There's been up and down Roto World blogs, whether or not you know the team wants to keep him. The team wants to get rid of him, but John Gruden wants to keep him. They're keeping him. They're getting rid of him. I don't know what's going to happen. I think they're probably going to keep him. That makes sense. He's going into the fourth year of a five-year deal. What do what you guys, are you guys in on uh, Michael Crabtree at this ADP, or is it time to move along like his chain? Well, this year he finished the 30th PPR receiver. Last year he was 12th, so it's a decent disparity. Or di- di- uh, disparity. Disparency. <laughs> disparity. But the offense was just awful this season. Wheels fell so off. The wheels fell off this thing. You saw Crabtree have a couple of decent games to start the season and, and sprinkled a couple in there during the season, but just couldn't put the same kind of uh, year together as he did in, in, oh, in oh 06 and 16. Um, so, you know, you had Derek Carr out. You just had a, a different kind of system in there that wasn't working and wasn't looking good. Oh, we mentioned it in the middle of the year that it was just awful the way they were trying to. They didn't know if they were running it or passing it. They were. They it just wasn't working. It wasn't. It was but not good. Crab started off strong. He six for eighty week one, six for eighty and three touchdowns week two. Bummer on week week three, but then six for eighty in a touch, six for fifty in a touch, three for twenty in a Which touch. Which is why you drafted him those six for fifty, forty, and then sprinkling some touchdowns there is is what you were looking for. Obviously, he finished twelfth the year before, so there was. A ton of good games in that season. Yeah, I mean, he he started off good this year or, or last year, and it just the wheels fell off. The whole the entire team was just out. Just they were Super Bowl bound in the preseason. You know, it was the the Raiders had made this postseason. They were the, the one before. team that could knock the Patriots off. Yeah, I know they were the team. They were the team coming up. They had the the quarterback had gotten hurt the year before, right before the playoffs, and they just had all this momentum. They were coming back. It's supposed to be good. Got his chain snatched again. I mean, just the, after just, taping it to his chest. The, the second snatching, yeah, was just fool me once, right? You know, shame yeah. on you. He, the the fool me can't get fooled again. <laughs> Tells us the George Bush quotes. To, <laughs> to get you, <laughs> to get your chain snatched off the second time is a little bit disrespectful. Uh, <laughs> by the same guy, no less, right? <laughs> and uh, prepared to not and, have it snatched. And you by tried to tape it. it to your chest, you. Daryl. And then you try to fight him with no helmet on. And he do right. still has his helmet on, so that wasn't going to go well. Crabtree's Both got no those, mojo, no self-respect anymore. Both I gotta, of those two dudes are idiots. Does any of that matter, though, for fantasy football? No, right? absolutely not, not. Not at all, but I guess well, to get Lack back to ability, the question, I guess. at 85, I think I'm okay. Like if, if I've come through the draft here, if we're talking about just ADP strictly and not trading and, and all that other stuff in an existing team, if I built my team a certain way and, and I wanted to try to get another player who I'm sure or, or at least pretty sure is going to score me points most weeks. I'm okay with taking Crabtree at, at this particular juncture and and knowing that I'm only, you know, maybe I'm getting another year or two, hopefully 
three. Sure. But. Well, obviously, you know, Fitzgerald's still churning on strong and pumping out wide receiver one seasons. But the, the Crabtree's got the big three O by his name now. This this time last year at 29. And 29 looks a lot better than 30. And for the last two seasons, nobody's been banging the drum louder for Crabtree than I have as being an extremely good value when it comes to putting somebody in your starting lineup every week. 16 and 17 15 and 16 were just ridiculous for Crabtree and I picked him up I traded him and put him on my team going into 15 in in one league and then going into 16 Casey and I put him on another team that we had together and this year coming in at 85 you might you you start to question you got to start pumping the brakes because there's no way to go up from here for him because this time next year he's gonna be 31 there's no way to go up from here right nothing wrong with putting that solid production on your team but just know, like Casey said, depending on how your team's put together, Crabtree, if he has a bad season this year, he's going to be in the. It's going to plummet. It's going to be 280p. Yeah. If he has a good year, it might be 79, it might be 85, it might be 90. He's not really going up. So he's 30 at now. And I just, like I said, it looks a lot worse than 29. You got to really pump the brakes on this thing. But if I, I imagine, honestly, I don't think there's any way. This is pre combine ADP. This is February ADP here. There's no way, honestly. It stays there. It stays there. He's right. got to come down. Exactly, Casey. Exactly. It's got to come down a little bit because some of these rookies are going to come up and be forced up. And everybody's going to have rookie fever on the clock. It's 30. He's, a lot of he, uncertainty already around Crabtree. At, There's going to be even more once players go places. Exactly. There, Crabtree's, I guarantee you, if, if you if you have a startup 30 days from now or more, Crabtree is farther down than 85. I guarantee you he goes farther down the list than this, and he can become a decent value again. I, I think there's nothing wrong with having Crabtree. And the teams that I have Crabtree, I don't feel bad about him. You're obviously not selling high. There's no selling high after the way that season ended for him. And he had a couple of really terrible games, some duds. So, so you I, got him, you're like stuck with him. Right, yeah. You're stuck with him right now. But in the season, if you have a bad team that's not really contending, I guarantee you if he's playing well, somebody will give you something for him. It's just right now he's got a lot of stink on him. The way he ended the season, it couldn't have gone worse for you if you a Crabtree owner. And there, there's already a, plenty of people who just don't think Crabtree is good and don't didn't respect Crabtree in the first place. Sure, but plenty if the last people, yeah, but you got to look at that those season numbers for the for last. sure. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. I wasn't saying. I just think like in the perspective of of most other people, there's a lot of people who just don't like Crabtree in general and probably disrespected him even in those in the 15 16 years i know i get you we got him for a a second when we traded a a late second for him coming into this year hoping to just put another guy on the bottom of our bench after 15 we used him for 16 okay yeah we uh, in 15 i know it goes fast in 15 he goes 85 for 922 and nine touchdowns (laughs) that's he had to find somewhere to put that in there and tw- in 16, he doubles down with 89 and eight touchdowns and 1,000 yards. So, I mean, both of those two seasons were just – you love to have him in your lineup every single week. And a down season last year, and uh, obviously everything I just said, he ain't getting no younger. He's not getting any younger. And, and if I – obviously, well, I agree with you. I think that as this progresses, the ADP will continue to slide down. And if I, th- if I think that I'm, I'm really uh, proud of myself and the team that I drafted coming in to the year here and, and coming into the, around the, let's just say, 80 to 90 ADP range, and I think that I got a good chance of bringing this thing home, very first year in a startup, I'm okay with taking crabs. Other than that, I'm just staying away from them. I agree with that. Even in a crappy year, he just put up eight touchdowns, and next year if something happens and this offense gets back on track, he could be an absolute monster deal at the, in the middle of the draft because he's definitely sliding down from this ADP. After that crabby year he had. <laughs> um, I, I get that. If, if, depending on how you built your, your startup team up to this point, I could see you wanting to be in here just to get some solid – a guy is probably going to bounce back if he's with the Raiders. Probably anywhere he goes, even if he doesn't isn't with the Raiders. I don't hate that idea either. So, but it's not a sexy pick. He's definitely not going to ever be any more worth than what he is right now. It's, I, there's there's younger, more sexier picks with more potential to be had right around this area. Um, if he were to fall further, like you guys are predicting, and I, I kind of agree with that sentiment then I'd be in a little bit later, I think, for sure. Yeah. But here, I think I'd probably rather take a swing on, on a younger, higher potential dude. No doubt. Sure. Take that back to Godwin, four picks ahead of right. him right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. you got to take Godwin and then double this ADP in your draft. I guarantee you at 150, 160, I can put you in a veteran that's going to be startable. 
a veteran wide receiver that's going to be startable and you can have an asset like Chris <clears throat> Godwin that would grow versus – Crabtree's age is going to turn him into a liability. I could put you in a family four door, <laughs> five star safety rating. Get you a Volvo at one fifty, bro. I'm crushing the Volvo used cars market right now. <laughs> Super. No, I think too. I think that's all. That's all really good. I think I think that's a decent insight on on Crabtree. I think we spent enough time. Way on too Crabtree. long yeah. talking about. Well, it. Well, just that you there. Take Godwin. And then grab Marquise Lee in three rounds. Yeah, sure. take Marquise Lee right here. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to Marquise Lee, but let's uh let's transition to the next guy in our list. Uh, that'll put a bow on on Michael Crabtree. Let's get into some Josh Doxson right next right here, staring at you at eighty eight. Um, I think there's probably some Redskins talk to be had here, but let's get into to Josh Doxson. He's a Excellent downfield receiver. Hasn't done a whole lot in his first two years in the league. Did score six touchdowns last year, so that's that's a solid starting point here. And he's he's the type of athlete that can that can fly through the air with the greatest of ease, and it's very impressive to watch. What do you guys are you guys in on Josh Doxson here at, at eighty eight? I think I'm probably out on Doxson here at eighty eight. Um I do enjoy I think Doxon in this in that particular class, I think that was was it fifteen that he came in with sixteen with Colt with uh Coleman, Coleman and Sterling Shepard in them. Mm-hmm. Um I thought he was, you know, one of the better vertical threat. He's like you said, he's a great ball tracker down the field, and I think once you get inside the twenty, he's a very strong piece in the red zone. I don't think he's a, a terrible receiver by any means. I'm just I, I think I'm I think I'm going somewhere else. Yeah, even with his limited in this, snaps last in this year, range here. Mid, it, it, three quarters of the way through the season, I, there was a stat out there where he was like top five red zone targets. I mean, yeah, the yeah. Redskins know that's why they drafted him in the first round. They know he's a red zone threat, and they were hit. I mean, you know, there was Jordan Reed was out. Pryor was already on the IR. They were down. They didn't have anybody running around out there really. And Doxon was getting the looks, but I I think this warranted because we know he's a beast when it comes to jumping up and grabbing the ball. It's just kind of like what Casey said. I, at, I, again, at 88 here, uh, but well, a couple of me, games, uh, a couple of games. Let me argue a little here. Well, th- let, let me let me throw this out before you get going because I don't know where you're going yet. Yeah. I do have – I put a little bit of stock in what Doxon does best, and Alex Smith comes in. He's not exactly the best long ball thrower, and I know that's going to uh, – I'm going to ruffle Casey's feathers, and that's going to get a good conversation after you go, Jay Wayne. Well, I got something to transition into, into that, that doesn't stat mean there. Alex Smith can throw Doxon targets in the red zone from 20, 25 yards away, but he's not going to throw that 48, 50-yard bomb on the money to him, I don't believe. Well – he so I was fine, under, he did fine throwing the bombs to, this, to Tyree Kill. I was under the notion that Alex Smith's deep ball was the most lacking part of his game, but according to Pro Football Focus, he had a QB rating of a 131 on balls that travel 20 yards or more down the field. So if, if you're not sure, that's a strong quarterback rating. Um, the next closest guy is Russell Wilson at 103. Yeah. So he was tops in the league. And what that equates to in numbers is there was 33 completions, which was tied for the most, 13 over 1,300 yards the most, and this is all on passes completed over 20 yards right. in the air, right? 12 touchdowns tied for the most in the league with only one interception, which Those is tied for the least. Ridiculous numbers. So, I mean, I, I that was like my kind of reservation was, well, Alex Smith doesn't have a good deep ball because that's just the notion, but like he was crushing balls 20 yards or more down the field. Now, I don't know what the stats are for 40 yards down the field or whatever, but who cares? Like, uh, th- it's crushing it. There's not a ton of balls going 40 yards down the field, really. Right, I mean, exactly. It's good point. 20, 30 for the, you Jinx. know. So, he, <laughs> so two years ago, his rookie year, he missed all but two games, right? Had an had a Achilles issue, which caused him to land on an, I, landed on IR. Came out that he had some... I think it was like chronic reoccurring Achilles tendonitis that was like, oh man, I don't even know if he can come back from that. And then like, I think he shed that. And I think that he's probably got some more explosiveness to game back because he, he's still, that's a tough injury to, to play through and, and to come back from. And I think he, you know, but he had explosiveness to spare, that's for sure. But there's been really no offseason chatter on this guy. And, you know, I, I think... I was a little surprised that he was this high, to be honest with you. It it is a little steep, but I mean, I mean, he's only been in the league two years. Yeah, no, and I and mean, he scored six touchdowns last. Efficient year. in the red zone, which is the best part of his game, and has always been a part that I thought that he would really excel at. I'm just, I'm a little weary of taking him at, at this this point in the draft. I would probably look 
elsewhere. But I mean, I don't. I like Alex Smith. I know he gets a he he has a, he gets a you know a Man, hard go, right. but I, I think he's going to be just fine and he'll come into the Redskins offense. And I think he, you know I think he's going to transition to what they got going on just fine. I think they'll put another piece or two around him. I will say to some of that stats that you just put up. I mean. Tyree Kill, nobody can keep up with Tyree Kill. So I was thinking you know, the same thing. It's de- definitely something that probably I'm padded, sure he helped that, padded yeah. that stat a little bit. But he but, was so far ahead of the next closest guy. Sure, no, no, I'm, in I'm, all I'm, those categories. I'm well, just, I'm saying that helped him probably go, get over the top of that that stat there. But I, I, I think I thought Alex Smith played great. He was like QB three or four last season. There's there no arguing with how good he was last yeah. year. And Doxson's not quite the athletic speedster freak that Tyree Kill well, is, but not, he's athletically freakish in his own right. Right, and different, he can go up. He can go up in the air where very few hum- humans can even get to. I mean, right. it's it's magic in the well, air. Well, to play devil's advocate, he goes up in the air and wins the contested catch, which Alex Smith doesn't want to throw the contested ball. Tyreek Hill's got you blown up, and it's not a contested pass. You he's just throw it up. Deuces. Just, yeah, he's already got the yeah. deuces up. You throw it out there, and if you're lucky, you can throw it far enough where he didn't outrun it already. Uh, just, well, just we saw Alex Smith advocate. let it rip a little last year because he had nothing to lose. He knew he was probably... Not too long in the tooth there with Kansas City and them having moved up to draft Mahomes. So he was playing his ass off to try and get a next contract. Now he's got that contract, and I don't think he's the type of dude that's going to just sit back and, well, and just rest on his laurels. I think he's going to want to prove Alex Smith that he's been, really good been still. been playing like, with a chip on his shoulder. Right. Everyone loves to hate him. He's been just fine. The, the, People the, do love the to The stink hate him. around Alex Smith and the Doxon thing was about the tight windows and, and how – you know, he was, wasn't was a tight window thrower and Doxon is more of a kind of a tight winded con- contested catch kind of guy like you were saying there. So, but he doesn't so have some people have already window. been throw it putting, I don't know what the exact the air. stats are on all that, mm-hmm. but there, there are stats to support the notion that you're, you're talking about. But Josh Doxon's window is not as tight no, as most I, dudes. I, no, no, I, I agree with you. That's the best, the thing I liked most about him, like I said, when he was coming out, I, I thought he was one of the best vertical threats and I love, I love the way he wins on the deep ball and tracks it. Um, I think he's a really good red zone weapon. I think I'm going to probably stay away from him here, though. Well, while you were talking, I'm just lying, looking around. We're starting with Doxon here at 88. Like, you just scroll down a little bit. This is just like a stinky zone here. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is just like ugly zone. I mean, I'm literally, my eyes are attracted to Kyle Rudolph down at 106. I mean, this this is kind of no man's land right around here. So, I can't argue with you if you wanted to be taking a, a shot at a guy like Josh Doxon at 88. Maybe... Maybe with it can all only the, go up. I it, feel like it, unless well, he gets another like Achilles injury or something. But I think I think with he's not the considering he's been in the league two years. He's not twenty three. He's twenty five. So you got the ages out there. It's going to hate if he doesn't do good this year. He'll be twenty six and not doing great. But just to throw it out there, you got Tariq Cohen sitting here at eighty nine. Potentially, you got the Ty- Tyreek Hill bandwagon guys going over there because Nagy's in Chicago over there t- saying that he can move move Cohen around and, and make some make some things happen. So just throw I maybe to find somebody that I would want to take in this range not named Doxon, it ain't really that easy. I, it's I mean, not as easy I thought it was gonna be. Alex Collins is right there at ninety. That's a solid stab. Depending on where you're you're looking at, what position you're looking at, I mean I don't really care about the age twenty five thing. I'm I think he's a solid home run cut whose potential can can he gets a couple games and him and Alex Smith look on the same page and his value just Sure. Could get cut in half. I mean, yeah. Well, I didn't want to pick out any of these. I didn't want to grab any of these rookie running backs without having the draft go through yet and knowing landing spot. Obviously, carry on Johnson's name looks good, stuff like that. But I mean, old uh, Johnson. Right. That guy. (laughs) But just like Casey said about the other couple of the other younger receivers, if Doxon comes out there and has a couple of good games early in the season, he's going to have a huge. Every, every in Dynasty, all the young receivers have a quick, fast bump if they start playing good at the beginning of the season. It's sure. just, just how it goes. You play good, and it's a quick track, which is from the up the ADP. <laughs> all right. Well, we've, we've got a little doxing in. Let's let's stick with the Redskins here. And Chris Thompson here at, at 92, sticking in the kind of organization here. Okay. Obviously, Chris Thompson had a ridiculous stretch of games there. And when you look at the game log, you're like, man, the points are ridiculous. But, you know, the, the kind of thing was in redraft, I, my personal opinion was to sell Chris Thompson because I didn't think that it was a sustainable thing. I think he well, could, you were all over him before the season. You're right. like, you got to pick up Chris Thompson. And then he came in, blew up, was scoring like three TDs right. a game. And then you're like, maybe you ought to move along. Just, now, and the, the way here. he was doing it, it was a lot of big plays and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And I, I, 
I just would have probably moved gonna him. Definitely going to be some regression there. And I'm, and I'm probably staying away again here at 92. Not that I don't like Chris Thompson. There's I a just, lot to like about this dude, but let me rattle off his injury rap sheet here. In, in 2012, it was a torn ACL. Then he had a labrum tear requiring surgery in 13, a labrum tear uh, that required surgery in 15, another torn labrum in 16, a fractured fibula, fibula that made him made him miss most of 17 here with uh, that he had surgery on too and those are just the the major injuries that does include all the strains sprains of all the different various body parts legs ankles knees toes and thighs um <laughs> and some back contusions yeah, so it's like out there holy crap yeah well what you you said you hit the nail on the head right there casey with all of the late pickups every single time that conversation came around casey was telling you to get this guy get thompson on your team get thompson on your team and dude this the, the first six weeks of the season he oh, was man. on Lights fire out. he was like a little he was like he's david so johnson out there he, he's so explosive he was ridiculous Knack but for the end zone but just. it was it was huge play after huge play he was part of the reason why why the redskins the other position players couldn't get anything done because he was scoring from 40 yards out yeah. taking away the drive all of a sudden you're the the redskins have a couple of plays and they get a first down they get a first down boom score chris Al thompson Smith didn't ha- or uh, uh kirk, kirk cousins. cousins didn't have to throw it to a wide receiver at all he just had chris thompson it was ridiculous and if i if i had this dude i'd probably be trying to move on and get something decent in return, or maybe you try and hold to see if if his stock goes up early in the season. That it is, he is saying that he should be back for training camp, so that's good to hear. Well, but, I mean, I think I think if he does get on the field and you do own him, I think you know you're you're gonna see, you know, m- maybe not the same like again because he was big play after big play. Maybe you won't see that like as a on a consistent basis like you were there where it was just ridiculousness. But all it's gonna take is a little bit to to flip thompson and and get some in-season value on. well anytime you're scoring big chunk plays like that the whole key word is sustainable sustainable and it's definitely not sustainable with those types of plays unless your name's tyreek hill but the other thing is like i didn't really i knew it was injury 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 but i really hadn't heard those specific injuries until you rattled them off and would would, no but it was the the the, did you say three labrums (laughs) three different torn labrums so i'm not liking my running back who shorty running back i'm not like my back. small little running back that's got three shoulders that are already been blown up so if I, i'm not drafting chris thompson here because last year he was in the 200s and after a couple of ridiculously good games he comes up 120 spots here he is and i can't buy him where he is now because he's it's not sustainable it is lightning in a bottle and if he does start the season next year and he's playing maybe he is in your lineup and he's crushing it for a little while but we there's just no, it's not a smart hold it might not be a bad flip you might not you might be able to get him from somebody even cheap this that you know you might be able to get him from somebody right now who's like i can't even deal with this i'll take a second rounder for him and you might be able to get two second rounders for him the first week of the season when he scores some points but i wouldn't want him on my team and try to be and think long term and chris john and and chris thompson right long term and chris thompson is just not gonna go together that's i'm not interested i think if he if he's healthy in the short term i think he's somebody that i'm and I have on my team, I'm either trying to move in the off season when he comes back and they're saying how good he looks or in season when he gets back on the field for a little bit and, and can catch some balls and, and get a couple handoffs. I'm with you. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take it to break. We'll be back with some more married to the game. All right, let's keep this thing moving. We just uh, covered Chris Thompson. We're going to skip down the ADP and cut to his counterpart. Samaj P. Ryan down at 144. If you listened to us last off season, we went Pretty, pretty hard in the paint for P. Ryan. We uh, had a had a love fest. I don't know if we still, quote, love him. He, he kind of let us down, or as Casey put it off air, the organization let kind of let us down with their usage. And and uh, if you read the Roto World blurbs now, they're all back and forth about whether he's going to take over the starting role or he's going to – they got to definitely improve. And, and at the running back spot, it's, it's back and forth. They definitely – you know, Roto World has hate in their heart. They let it out as often as they can. Um, I really would rather them not give us their opinion, but uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's get into some P Ryan here at 144. I'll double down. I'll take P Ryan at 144. What, what do you guys think? Well, 144 is not doubling down. 144 is like pl- yes, please. Wh- why not? At 144, what do you have to lose? I mean, obviously, there's a Giovanni Bernard right there who gets no respect, and there's an old washed up Demarco Murray right there. I mean, wh- why wouldn't you take Samaje P Ryan who? really showed you a lot in a couple of games last year and just before i turn this over to casey in his analytical eyes like 
you don't say we're definitely upgrading the running back position if you're definitely running upgrading the running back position. Mm-hmm. Like it's everything about pre draft is all about you know smoke screens. Smoke screens, right? So if you're definitely where there's smoke, there's fire. If you're definitely upgrading the running back position, that's when you're hammering. You're hey, we're looking at cornerbacks and defensive back and and D, D ends. I mean, come on now. Why are you gonna go disrespect your man like that? Nobody's doing that. Nobody's it's doing a little that. disrespectful towards P Ryan. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's a, what that organization does. They just disrespect their players. Yeah, I don't give a shit about yeah, it. no doubt, a, bad organization, it's a, it's a terribly run organization. Terrible. has been a long for a long time. They, they 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 don't know what they got when they got it. They can't ever figure things out. They paid Kirk Cousins way too much money. They could have kept him around. Yeah. and paid him probably less money if they would have just paid him originally. Right, like they, they they just don't know what's going on. They always keep the wrong guys. They just can't seem to figure it out. And then as far as P Ryan goes, I mean. When you look at him from beginning of the season to the end of the season, I think you saw a nice growth from from a player. Absolutely. I thought you saw a guy in the beginning of the season who wasn't running like you saw him run in college. He was, he was pressing. pressing. Yeah, he was Jeez. pressing really hard. And when, you know, obviously when there's nothing there, I like to see my running back, especially a guy that his stature, put their head down and try to get what you can get. With that being said, like I, I don't think he was having enough patience in the beginning of the season. And when you watch him from beginning of the season to the end of the season, I st- thought he started to show some patience and started to get back to kind of get comfortable. And he had some fumbling problems and he confidence. Fumbled, he dropped an easy pass, one of his only two drops on the year. I, I can remember it like it was yesterday. It was like wide open, going to convert the third down, and he just blew it. He battled. And he, got, he put himself in the coach's doghouse by, by messing up a couple times, got his confidence down. And it just it started to snowball effect in the in the wrong way. But he's a trooper. He's a battler. He battled himself back to a prominent position. And in midway through the season, or week eleven and twelve, he start he had over twenty carries in each game. Right. Well, I mean, they didn't have a choice. Rob Kelly got injured. And Chris Thompson got Chris hurt. Chris Thompson got hurt. So, so they had so to find a feature. They had to feed P. Ryan. And what do he do? He I I think he he played fairly well, especially on a team who you know wasn't very hopeful of of doing much and the offense in general when you watch the team especially later on in the season as the defense got hurt and as the offensive linemen started to dwindle down Trent uh Williams Trent Williams was hurt all season Morgan Moses was battling injuries all season this this line was banged up um obviously you don't have too many threats on the offensive side as far as weapons prior got injured Crowder battled injuries a good bit of the season. P. Ryan battled injuries, a hand injury, and a multitude of other things. Reed was nowhere to be throughout. seen. Yeah, Reed's nowhere to be seen. So lots of things. And then when you watch this offense on tape, it's like it's a bunch of big, heavy sets with one wide receiver out here, and they got everybody in the middle of the field. There's one deep, there's one safety playing, you know, kind of center field back there, and then everybody else is, is up near the line of scrimmage. Like it just wasn't that great. When you look at the next gen stats and you look at eight eight plus uh, defenders in the box. P Ryan's fairly high up there. Now I don't, it doesn't clarify whether that's, and I don't have the time to go through and count whether it was eight defenders and eight offenders, which a lot of the times I think that was the case is that they had a lot of bigger, heavier guys in there. So there's a lot of traffic and whatnot. Yeah, you'll get but, eight in the box if you got a big hev package. Right. So, but still I think P Ryan did face, you know, a little bit of an uphill battle when he was doing what he was doing. But then at the end of the season, you saw a little bit of increase of him kind of waiting for that zone kind of read action on the offensive line develop and showed patience and, and hugged up to the line and burst through holes. And he's a pretty hard guy to bring down once he's, running extremely with, hard. once he's running with confidence. And these people who say that P Ryan can't catch, like he ends the season with three for four targets, three for three, four for four, two for two and three for three doesn't really play in week 17 Ends up with a decent amount of catches. And, and looked and, great doing it. And he it. looked fantastic doing so. It was like a one-handed catch in there, too. And he's t- like, like I said, I mean, it wasn't like he was just getting hit when he caught the ball. If there was somebody near him, he was catching balls in stride and running running right, right through arm tackles. I, I thought you saw some some good growth. Now, when you look at the, the averages on the yards per carry in, in some of those games. Oh, well, it's yards per carry. They're not fantastic, but there's also in this Dallas game, they get down early. They have a lot of turnovers. They're down trying to come back. So he has some good runs. And when you watch the game and then you go back and look at the box score, you're like, well, this doesn't make sense. I just saw him make a bunch of good runs. But then when you look at the the, the overall end game and you look at where the runs went, it's like positive run, positive run, positive run, eight three, four, one, eight, you know, and then it's minus three, minus three, minus one, no gain, no gain, no gain. And it's like, 
some of those aren't really his fault. There's guys in the backfield. He doesn't really have anywhere to go. And then in the in the Charger game, again, they get down early and they're trailing the whole game. You know, so it's 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 but still what, what then when you look at the fantasy production, he comes back with those catches and in from week eleven on, he has sixteen points. From week twelve on week twelve, he has or in, in week eleven, sorry, he has nineteen points. In week twelve, he has sixteen points. Week thirteen, he has nine point nine, which is I'm gonna count that as another double digit game for you. <laughs> three in a row. So that's three in a row. Wow. And then he finishes with nine point two, eight point six, and nine point four. And in week seventeen, not a ton of usage. So I, I mean, carries. on a struggling team, on a struggling offense, I thought he played, and and a defense that was just beat up with injuries. I thought he played pretty well to end the season, and you started to see the reason why you did like you, Samaj P. Ryan at the end of the season, and you know, so at one forty four, I'm 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 not that upset with snagging him and put him on my team. Obviously, if they no, that's the last pick in the twelfth round. You could do a lot worse than grabbing P. Ron. A, a potential starting running back, and obviously maybe they draft some. Maybe they do upgrade and draft somebody it, it, later in the draft, or maybe they bring in another free agent, and, and we kind of see how that that plays out. But I thought you saw some some positive things from him. I thought he can kind of can do a little bit of everything for your team. Like he can be your first and second down guy, and then on, like he caught balls perfectly fine. When they threw it to him, yeah, two drops. That's a uh, that's player profiler, not that's inflated drops there too. <laughs> yeah, all right, um, and, and well, real quick to the point of uh, if they bring in another running back, then his ADP is going to drop even more, and he's going to be even cheaper. Yeah, very which true. I'm all in because he, I, I'm, I'm not going to blame them if they bring in another running back. They got freaking Rob Kelly and Chris Thompson who can never finish a season. So I'm not. I wouldn't be mad at him if they brought in another running back. Maybe if they spent like a high pick on one, but I, yeah. I don't think that's gonna be the case. I'd still be down on Piron because I think he's gonna win this battle. I think he's gonna win this job and he's gonna produce because he's got his confidence back. He's got his his swagger back. He he started to look like the dude you saw in college, and he, he'll run you over. And then he shows you some PPR floor. Like yeah. let me get some Piron. Why do you hate? Why yeah, you hating? Uh, the biggest thing about that is the way that he looked decent catching those balls. It gives you a potential for like people say they just pigeonhole somebody and says this guy's big, he's strong, so he definitely can't catch. Yeah, and and, and you know he didn't have a lot of college production in that standpoint, but you gotta you gotta see when he did have given the chance, give, given the chance, looked like. he looked pretty decent. We well, said that last in year. In a quick Google search here, it looks like the Redskins don't have a third round pick. They got too many holes to be worried about the running back in the first two rounds, and there's a lot of de- there is a lot of strong, solid running back depth in the draft class here. So for in the sure. fourth and the fifth round, they definitely could grab somebody good, but in the fourth and the fifth round, I, I I don't unless some some decent running back slide down the board there. I just don't see where you're going to get somebody who comes in automatically and bumps P Ryan out of the spot to, to get mm-hmm. a shot. And like you said, Jay Wayne, when he had his confidence going, it you know a fumble can hurt you, sure. But when he had his confidence going, he looked good. And Battering ram, man. When, he always he was like spinning forward, getting five more yards as he was getting tackled. No, no, no doubt. And oh. those the week eleven game, like twenty three carries, one hundred and seventeen yards on the road against the Saints, which they had surprisingly one of the best mm. defenses in the league this Preach. year in a touchdown. And playing at home the very next week, you got a rookie that just carried the ball 23 times, comes back the next week, carries it 24 times, gets 100 yards, catches three for 30, 30 like Casey said. And the next week, the Dallas game on the road is when they just fell apart with their turnovers and the offensive line had two or three injuries in like four different plays. Yeah. It was like bang, like the, the game came to a stop for like 45 minutes because there was two huge men laying on the field that couldn't move within three plays of each other. And he gets there's no no nothing there for the rock to run the rock, but he grabs three for thirty in the passing game, like you said. So like this dude is not just a one and two down back bruiser. Is he going to come in there and be Le'Veon Bell? Absolutely not. But you it doesn't have to tw- come out on third at, down at twelve twelve and the potential to drop down. Like it, like you just it's, you. I think that was perfect. If what a you guy said. grabs a, it doesn't matter who they take in the draft. Right. Because if they grab a if running they take back, any running back, the haters will be out. Any running back sounds better than Piron. Yeah, they're already out. I mean, if you have hate in your heart, let it out. <laughs> sure, he's, he's a plotter. He's not any good. I told you so. Oh, I liked him, but now I'm off of him. I I I liked what I saw at the end of the season, and this is. This is what fantasy football is all about, man. You, you, everyone's down on this guy. I, I, I'm I'm going to double down on him, and I'm I'm going to reinvest and, and and see what what comes out. It's not going to really cost me or hurt me at all. So mm. I'm going to yeah. I'm, I'm hanging out with P. Ryan. I, I believe in his ability. Yeah, the biggest thing is here is is to don't let the liberal media 
tell you <laughs> how to think and feel. So when the Redskins draft a running back, which they very well could do with a later round pick, don't listen to all the hate that's definitely about to come out. Just be glad that P. Ryan's ADP is going to drop even more and be all in. Let's just kiss some P. Ryan. Well, well, one more thing, like on, on some of these negative runs that he had, it should have been way worse than it was, and he fought just to get zero or negative one on, on right. some of these negative gains. He's a really tough guy to bring down. He's a hard-nosed runner. I like everything that P. Ryan the Ricochet has Romance. <laughs> sure. Oh, my God, King. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a> ricochet <laughs> Romance. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've done it for the other players. So looking around here at the ADP, and I, I, we, do, we do assume with a lot of confidence with the way the drafts might work out and the depth of the running back class that even further P. Ryan hate could come out and he could fall farther than 144. And I, I believe that's a pretty safe bet. My ch- if I had to pick, if I was at on the clock at 12-12 right now and I had to make a pick, and the ADP that I'm looking at is February ADP on DLF, I would take Austin Severian Jenkins. But in the same realm that I think P. Ryan's going to drop, I don't think there's any way that Austin Severian Jenkins Doesn't is on the board. There's list. no way he's on the board at 12-12. He should okay? be. Okay? I'm just saying whoever did uh, did these mocks, and this is an average, so for sure in one of these, you can scroll right over there and look in one of these round drafts. Somebody took him at 125, but then another draft, somebody let him go all the way down to 168 and 175. So just saying, uh, this is this is kind of a fun, this is a better looking group of people than it was up there. <laughs> sure. 25, <laughs> 30 names above there like we were talking earlier. So. All right. Well, so we're at the player haters ball here. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we might as well keep with another player that everyone hates. No respect at all for this guy. Just continue it. Continuous hatred. Lamar Miller at 93. And again, we talked about kind of P. Ryan probably continuing to slide if they draft somebody. I, I think 93 is conservative right now for Lamar Miller. I think this number is going to continue to go down, sure. especially as the Devonta Foreman, Deontay Foreman. Deontay Deontay. For, Foreman, Deontay Foreman love ramps up once he starts to get healthy. Well, Foreman's at 98. Lamar Miller's at 93. There's no There's, way they don't switch places. Right. They're and definitely I, and switching places. I think places. They're, they're both they're going in opposite directions mm-hmm. for, you know, I, I can get behind Foreman. I like Foreman coming out, and I, I he did flash some in this offense last year but let's let's get into Lamar Miller at 93 here even though with with all that said let's let's talk about him at 93 well as bad as it felt last year for 90 for for number 93 ADP here in Lamar Miller he had I, I saw a stat the other day. He was in the tops of the league in facing loaded boxes because at, of, at like forty seven percent. Yeah, at half the time he's running against more defenders than they can block, and he also was what twelve or thirteenth in total yards produced. Right. So it's bad. Like he just didn't score any touchdowns. And and to say to say like the, with the loaded boxes, it was it was, it's with plus one. Well, on, one more defender than right, they can block. Right. Right. So it and and let's let's be honest here. When Deshaun Watson was in there, Lamar Miller was a different running back. Deshaun Watson didn't play very long, unfortunately, because of his the knee injury. But the Houston Texans offense within a calendar year has transformed itself. Absolutely. From, they were making the they were making the playoffs for a couple years in a row on the backs of J.J. Watt and some great defense. And an, and an atrocious offense. A horrible offense. Pick six offense. They were throwing it to the other team more than they were throwing it to themselves. You bring in a, you get you 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 bring in Will Fuller. You bring in Lamar Miller hasn't been a gangbusters, but he's been a solid running back and very underappreciated. And you absolutely strike it rich. You trade it up for Deshaun Watson, which I loved about the Texans just to begin with, because they traded up and took the right guy, and they just turned their whole offense around basically with a quarterback. That's what right. that's how it mm. works. That's how it works. Mm. But I mean, you got Lamar. If if Deshaun Watson's on the field for the rest of the season last year, Lamar Miller is not being talked about like this. Then then you I mean got, maybe he is. It just seems like perpetual hate, regardless of what's going on with Lamar Miller. Well, as bad as it was, still RB sixteen overall, and like the the total yardage. I I, don't, I thought I had it somewhere, but like his total yardage number was was a, a up there in the in the twelve or thirteen. It was. It was. It was, the total yardage number was higher than the than the. Uh, than the fantasy ranking number because of the touchdowns it wasn't there for him but what well, where were the touchdowns at all when Deshaun Watson wasn't playing right nobody was getting touchdowns and I you know I don't disagree that Foreman may possibly be the future but like you said this offense has turned around and I like I want a piece every piece that I can get of this offense and you know I just think there's a ton of disrespect for Miller I think he'll still produce now there is a possibility that they say that Lamar Miller 
they could cut him to save five million dollars or or whatever. Which to me, if we want to start talking about this and all the speculation, like you got a guy who's a rookie coming off an Achilles Foreman. injury, Foreman coming back with you, a busted you're, up you're, ankle. You're not a cap strap team, right? You got a guy who's been, you know, he hasn't he hasn't been this superstar that you wanted him to be. But damn it, you haven't really helped him at all. And when and when sure. and when Deshaun was out there, he was. Just fine. He was great. Borderline great. Right. I loved everything I saw with Lamar Miller when, like, you know, you had a crappy offensive line. Why would you cut above. Lamar Miller? Why would you cut Lamar Doesn't Miller just sense. to save? If you want to cut him, maybe, maybe you, okay, maybe you're going to draft another running back or pick up another running back, but you got a, a rookie coming off of, a, off of an Achilles injury, which can drastically hurt your explosion and all that kind of stuff. Like, I just not sure why you would go ahead and just cut Lamar Miller. Like, you have a legitimate shot jj watt comes back yeah clowny comes back you have decent defensive backs you have merciless like you have you get a decent an, another okay offensive lineman mixed in there and maybe a, a better serviceable tight end and you have a team that that's not a great division obviously jacksonville just you know came out of nowhere came out of nowhere but this is this is a team a playoff team no like doubt. why would you for what for five well he's million? got a bad yards per carry <laughs> right right 3.7 but if if they if i would understand it if you make a strong move for a highly touted back not named but you just take, you just drafted one i know i know well i know i'm so, like you but you like you said you got foreman who's a youngster in may and did look good in, in spurts and shots and he looked good catching a couple of balls out of the backfield and taking it down the sideline i'm not gonna say he didn't look good but like you said he's coming back from a from a ruptured achilles like that's it ain't been long since but nobody if you, other Ter, Terrell Suggs you don't do that he sizzled Tough, yeah he made if it your look name easy, ain't Suggs and you ain't the toughest man on the field you don't play football after you tear your Achilles and so this is and you have a young you have the brightest you have the best thing mm. you you have the best thing to ever mm. ever happen to your franchise Deshaun uh, and Deshaun what? Watson I mean JJ Watt he's the man of the year and he does you know he's great for the franchise don't get me wrong but you have the quarterback which is what matters in football you have Deshaun Watson coming back off a busted knee you got your your f- potential future running back coming off of a blown out Achilles why not hang on to Lamar Miller and just be able to use a quality right. running back? Use a guy who's no familiar with what's him. going on. He's if been you, around the organization. If you get a second round running back, maybe named Darius Geis or one of those. Maybe if you bring in Nick Chubb or Sony Michelle, I get it. But one of the not name those guys. Why would you do that? You have other you, problems. Other problems. Right. Other problems. And, and this dude Lamar Miller is basically the model of consistency. Looking at his game log, it's very solid to quite solid. Like you said, when Deshaun Watson was in there. Um, he he's only missed two games in the last five years of his career right. playing the running back position. That's very impressive. Um, he did leave a bit of a bad taste in owners' mouths. The last four games of the year weren't the great st- greatest statistically, um, but he was playing through a knee injury, and the team was already and out the of the team playoffs. Was done right. So why are they risk him? And there's like blurbs of how Alfred Blue outplayed him from a number standpoint, and then like they literally on Christmas there was a blurb that said. Quote, Lamar Miller outplayed by Blue versus Steelers, end quote. And then goes on to say and explain that he rushed 10 times for 55 yards, which if my math's right, that's 5.5 yards per carry. That means he's good. So I don't know what this whole hate thing is about about that. And then you got to go down to the game logs to see that he also added a catch for 10 yards. They didn't mention right. his one catch, his one target for 10 yards, which he had no drops on the season. So no drops charted with for Lamar Miller. Thought that was very impressive. He had 36 receptions, which is pretty solid. It's right. a very, very that's what brings his floor up. Like there's not very many games aside from the end of the season when he was playing through a knee injury that he didn't get you double digit points. Right. And you now now if you can have a bit more of an efficient offense, there's not too many offenses that are running with Bell Cow backs. There's plenty of offenses that are splitting with two guys we've seen Lamar flourish with a little bit less right less might be a little bit more with him and he's been very consistent and you give him maybe five six touchdowns on the year and all of a sudden everyone's you know Lamar Miller's saving your franchise he had six so I'm in with that yeah he's he's a fast dude he's he's got four four speed and he can bust off big plays but it's strange because he didn't have his longest run was 21 yards and his longest reception was 36 yards. Like those well, numbers, it's hard to bust off long strange. runs when everybody in the box is just trying right. to shut you down. And There's, when your whole offensive line is full of red players on Pro Football right. Focus, just like a bunch that, of those are all bad scores. Deshaun that, Watson turns that offensive line right. into and that's and when he comes in, it's it's like was there a major upgrade on the offensive line or is maybe not. just Deshaun Watson is, has the ability to make everyone around him play better. That's one of the, the my ma- most favorite features. 
features about him is that he brings everybody else's quality of play I think you up. said it at one point. He's like your sixth offensive he lineman is. when you put him he, in there. You can't sack him on that first guy. Because he's super mobile. He's not looking to run, and he can stay in the pocket and, and create downfield. Jay Wayne, to say that one more time, how many red dots on Pro Football Focus do they have for the offensive line? All five. Five? Yeah. Five red dots. Five red's not red. good. Red's, red's not, bad? Red's below five, average. Five, quite five bad offensive linemen. Right. That ain't good. Yeah. And and no, not a good blocking tight Solid end anywhere. Blocking scheme though, they do yeah. run the ball well. So what they, what oh, Bill O'Brien is a guy who wants to run the ball. Right. So right. having two guys who can do it is just fine. And and sure. there isn't any stats that say Dante Foreman was doing that against loaded boxes. Like when Dante Foreman was getting his opportunities, everyone was like, "Good, Lamar's out of the game. Let's back up and defend these receivers." There is nothing wrong with the Texans maybe drafting three or four offensive linemen. <laughs> right. You know, like you got to get rid of those red dots, bro. You can't yeah. be having five of them. And, no. they, and they they had some injuries. Who's the guy that was holding out to through most of the well, year? They, Came they back shipped, and they, they traded him, over him out. To, uh, oh, yeah, it was one of Seattle. the best left tackles in the game. Yeah, Dwayne what, Brown. Why don't you pay him? Yeah. Well, you, if I was they, about to they say are that, stubborn is yeah. what if happened you, there. If you could have, if you got yeah. five red dots, that they're not quite as red if you got one anchor left yeah. tackle when right. you got Dwayne Brown but right. you know what you did you let him go to somebody in the NFC yep what are you doing not that PFF is the, the colors on PFF sure. or the NLB all, all but like it's just worth noting that this dude didn't have a good offensive line that was evident to see if you watched Tom Savage play and sure Deshaun comes in there and he's he's just scrambling and keeping plays alive just amazingly you just see everything that you saw out of him in college and and then you get no you, you got people on there like oh well he dropped old foreman drastically outplayed lamar miller like Mm -mm. what you saw was is watson scramble around and and hit foreman on a play where nobody was around him and then he ran down the field and made somebody miss like for i'm not taking any i like foreman and he's i'm not trying to hate on foreman at all i like foreman i think these guys (laughs) should coexist and be a really good tandem in the backfield absolutely i'm just saying i don't i don't see the hatred for lamar miller like everyone hates this guy and says he sucks so much I just don't think it's a. I just don't think it's a fact. Yeah, look, Devon, Dante Foreman caught three balls, and one of them just happened to be down the sideline. On and Deshaun Watson made that play. Oh yeah, he made somebody miss, and he ran for a long time down the sideline, and it looked good, no doubt about he made, it. Like two people miss, and Dante crazy. Foreman can create on his own. Like I mean, I'm I'm again. I I don't not. This isn't the purpose to like. I don't like. Right. I like Foreman. We're not hating on Foreman. <laughs> yeah. We we liked we put put him in a. Well, I mean, let, let's keep this thing rolling. So you got Foreman at, at 98 down here. We said that we thought that these these uh, ADPs would, would swap and oh, continue in opposite flip-flop. directions. They're, they're definitely flip-flopping. You know, if Lamar Miller gets cut and goes somewhere else, I mean, you know, maybe maybe his stable's out a little bit. Um, but so so Foreman at 98, it's, you guys cool with Foreman at 98? You like him coming back off the Achilles? You want, you know, they're, they're, everyone wants him to be the lead dog. Like, this, if he's the lead dog, and I want a piece of this Texans offense absolutely. is really is really what I'm angling just for about here. to say that and you really kind of just paired that up so nicely with if he's a lead dog Texans offense with Deshaun Watson if Deshaun Watson comes back and he's looks like he did last year and Dante Foreman comes back and he's healthy you want Devon you want Foreman on your team Foreman is a great gamble at, at the 98 here that's what in the ninth round uh 10th round a late ninth I mean that's 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 a that's a good gamble. That's a solid gamble. But you're talking about a guy that just ruptured his Achilles. Yeah. You, you know you gotta you gotta really kind of water tough. down your expectations early in the season. Now, if you have a startup past spring workouts or past, I mean, at least get into some mini camps and Foreman's out there on the field and they say he looks good and you can't tell it happened. They're saying he's on schedule. You better pick up Foreman. They're saying he's on schedule, but the Achilles, like your burst, and is that's part of what there, he relies that's, on. That's right. part of the be- that's part of the good. That's the best part of his game is his explosion, his long speed. So why not? Why, you got a really again but back did, to this point. You got a really good offense and a decent and a pretty good defense. The defense has been your backbone. Your offense is evolving. Bill O'Brien did a great job of rescheming this entire offense mid season overnight to, to to do what. Deshaun Shame Watson on him for does. not having that done all preseason and offseason. Very whatever. true. Very oh, true. We said that last year ten yep. times. But you trade that in the first half. Why would you, you not? Him in the why first would half. you not want a guy like Lamar Miller anchoring your team for even if it's the first four games? Just ease Foreman back in. Exactly. If you really want him to be your lead dog, why are you going to put him out there with and, and yeah. risk anything? Sure. Like let him point. let him let him come back. Yeah. Spend Foreman's the five got, million and get this consistent year out of you Lamar Miller. You want to cut Lamar next year? Cut him next year. Foreman's two hundred thirty five pounds, Bo. 
You yeah. need to give that Achilles. I don't just think a he's second. quite that. Oh, Foreman, right? Foreman. Uh, there, there's Foreman. some stats that say Lamar Miller's that big, but no, he definitely ain't that big. No, he's not that big. But he is. Fair, he's bigger than I thought he was. He's listed at two eighteen here on on. So, yeah, are you guys in it on Foreman at ninety eight? Yeah, but I'll tell you this: if if you if you draft before you figure out if Lamar Miller's on the team or not, they could be splitting carries, and you don't be really excited about any of them in your starting lineup. Well, I mean, you're drafting him at ninety eight again with with the hopes that he's, he's twenty one years old, right? And he's going to be the guy. Sure, and people yeah. want to. People I, just like the new shiny object, oh, and, and yeah. Lamar Miller has been, you know, not this awesome player. So there's no chance that he's good, and I don't want him on my team. Mm-hmm. Lamar's still only 26. If he has a great year, I don't see why they wouldn't fill that whole thing up again. It's possible he's there for two two more years. I maybe and he, not. And Lamar but like, leaves, and he's he's going to go somewhere else, and right. probably be just fine. Lamar's I'm, a good running back. I'm man. all in on Lamar 93, 98 for a dude coming off of Achilles tear. It's that. That's that's a little tough. There's all these great rookies coming in, and everyone's like, "Oh, you you know, there's going to be a, rookies. There's going to be running backs everywhere." And it's like, you, all these rookies could suck. Every single one of them coming in here could be like, you, obviously Saquon, and and you know, you got a couple of guys who you're like, they're probably not going to suck, but like, <laughs> probably going to th- be pretty awesome. There's a, there's a, <laughs> some of nobody them. knows if any of these guys are going to be good. Like, it's just it happens, you know. Oh yeah, it happens. I, I think. Uh, at 98 here, I think I might have to take the guy that's at 96 over him. Let's go ahead and take a break. Let's wrap this Texans talk up. And we'll 96. come back. We'll get into some oh, Marlon Mack. That's what they call a tease in the after, industry. Jay Wayne just went with the tease. You after can't the take break. Mar- Marlon Mack over Foreman. We'll see. Hmm. That's why Roger Pedactor's dead. He found Captain Winky. <laughs> <laughs> Big old Mr. Kanish. <laughs> Let's get into a big old Mr. Kanish himself. Ooh, Marlon, Marlon Mack. Mack. Bit of a point of contention here. Yeah. Married to the game. Not because we dislike him. We actually really like the guy. We we kind of pumped him up last offseason as, as an pump, electric. Pump, pump him up. <laughs> an electrifying player that uh, needed some some polishing. He uh, had some, uh, some things to learn, you know? He needs to learn <laughs> the way I learned from my father. The way he learned from his father. <laughs> Basically, uh, Marlon Mack needed to learn from his dad, Frank Gore. Yeah. How to not Frank the tank. everything outside. Frank the Tank don't play that. Right. And so last offseason, we had to kind of come on, on the mics and like s- settle down the hype on Marlon Mack because everybody was like, oh my gosh, he's about to be better than Frank Gore. He's going to overtake this backfield and be the best thing ever. And we were like, hold on a second. Maybe Old Robert Frank- Turbin had something to say about that for a minute, and then he got hurt. Yeah. Gun well, show. Frank Gore had something to be yeah. said. I mean, Frank the Gore inconvenient just- truth. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Which, he's coming back for his 35-year-old age season. Like, well, come on, Frank. You should just ride just off in the up. sunset, man. Frank doesn't ride off. Though. No way. Well, he wants to bring it back, but he's not going to be a Colt. Yeah, they're going to cut ties. So, But there's a chance that Saquon could come in here. Well, that um, would really put a huge damper, damper if they on, yeah. if they drafted Saquon, and but I, I couldn't really blame them if they did. Um, I do think that there's there's no chance they're not adding a running back or two. I would like probably. to see them draft like Bradley Chubb or somebody else besides Saquon. But. Right, right, like a, something to help out this offensive line, help out Andrew Luck. But I mean, so to get to get back to the tease, sure. Before we left, you said maybe you would draft Mac over Foreman. Is that is that what you were alluding that's, to? That's yeah, that's kind of what I, I want to do almost. I mean, I just the Achilles is really scares me. I do believe that Foreman is, is going to be behind Lamar Miller this year. I, I do like what Foreman brought to the table, but man, look and, and looking back at Mac, I, I had to go watch some some of his his tape from this past year in the NFL, and he he put some really good stuff down. Yeah, I mean he he it, looked like the guy a, he was in college. He looked like a magician. He, there was some plays where. It, he it shouldn't was, have gotten out right. of that. Yeah, no. And then I, he busted it off. A hundred percent. He really slithered. He looked great catching the ball. Yeah. Like they threw him some screens. There was some through the tackles running. Scored a couple touchdowns doing that. But also Got some looked plays great called bouncing back it. as well. Right. Looked so. good bouncing it outside too, which is his forte. And that was our issue with him was that he needed to to learn a little bit more about playing the running back position, especially okay. coming to the NFL. But now he's got a whole year where he learned from Frank Gore. Apparently, America believes you. They're going with <laughs> Mac. They're going with Mac over Foreman. Mac yeah. averages at ninety six. Foreman averages at ninety eight. Big Co, where, where are you at here? I'm taking, you, you didn't think no, on I, the on the tees going out. You were mm-hmm. questionable. Yeah, I what mean, I, 
I, I definitely think that there's you could pick out some plays where Mac looks fantastic. There's no doubt about it. There's you know we all liked him last off season. Mac can look really good. I just feel like the I feel like I I would rather have Foreman on my team than Mac, and I I'm, I wouldn't pick Mac over Foreman under any circumstances. All right, under any circumstances. Mm, I, I mean, like yeah, I like okay, it. Why? Okay, I like so that you guys are why? under why if Roto World comes out and tells me that that. Foreman's Achilles isn't right. They're you know that's different, but he's on track, quote unquote, as of now. So I would not. Also make. loves Foreman. I wouldn't take Mac over Foreman. I would not. Why? Why? Because I just think I mean because I like the guy that's super fast and he's two hundred thirty pounds versus the guy that's super fast at two hundred ten pounds. I'm but a waitist. Catch passes, you I'm just, a waitist. Marlon Mack, <laughs> I guarantee, had more than three catches on less snaps than than Foreman did. I know you love your PPR floor guys. Sure, but I also like my big dude guy, that, my big guys that can plug it in at the goal line too. And I like the guy that's playing with Deshaun Watson for sure. I'm not even, I don't even know for a fact if Andrew Luck will ever play again. He's throwing weighted balls. <laughs> that was my line last <laughs> I week. Know, I know. Use that against you. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I, I can't, oh, I can't try, really I mean, argue with you too much. I just wanted to hear you justify a, a little. I, I don't know. Be a freaking I, crying shame if Andrew Luck doesn't play, but I'm just, yeah, you know. Yeah, very terrible. I, I'm right. banking on uh, I'm banking on this on the Colts having Andrew Luck, not drafting Saquon, and uh, Marlon Mack getting a, a legit shot to prove that he learned in his first year and can step into this role. I, I will say that I don't think that they'll move forward with Marlon Mack being like their their lead bell cow. Bell no. cow in, yeah. in, but if as long as they don't draft another bell cow. Then I'm, I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, he's a complimentary he, type rollback. I mean, he's a 210 pounder. He's fourth round pick. So, Not that it matters anymore, but I mean, so, my boy, my my boy's 100, 230 pounds and third round pick. Got them both going for me. I'll take. Foreman's it. a little fat. Foreman's I'll tell you maybe what. Maybe cut down a little bit. Old Mike Mayock did not like what what they were doing at the draft with showing those monkeys making those picks. He had a shit fit about that at the at the old draft oh, yeah. last year when Marlon Mack got picked for the Colts. He was like, if they go back to the zoo and show <laughs> yeah, this orangutan yeah, one more time. <laughs> he was getting really upset this about This is about that. the kids. Yeah. <laughs> he got shit. Mike funny. Mayock got so salty about that orangutan making picks. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> then the boys started breaking down the orangutan. Yeah, <laughs> it gets they, things get weird when you watch draft coverage for that. Even the day today, three, even the combine in the second, third day today. When like, what the hell did we just talk been about? Sitting there forever. Them boys just Michael Irving and Steve Smith were going back and Chopping forth. Chopping it up. Old Steve Smith was like, "Why does your shirt keep getting tighter every year?" He was like, "When you're done with that, give that back to my son." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gave him some. He was like, "You know, you gotta." You got a Ph. I got a PhD in route running. Are you saying that you just you just got like a like a minor in route running? And Irvin was like, Nah, I'm big bodied and I can run the routes. <laughs> he, he was like, I have both of them. <laughs> so so back to the question. What about you, Case Mac or Foreman here? Mm. I'll go. I'll. I'll <sighs> I like both of these guys. What do you? What do you? And um, if, if I want to know what you. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. What's in the plums? Mm, in the in the plum, I, I like I like the I think Foreman and the offense and, and what's going on over there. I, I like that a little better. Bingo. Uh, but I could really go either way, man. R- honestly, whichever one's on Suck the board. It, reindeer which, games. <laughs> you gonna take you gonna take a complimentary piece. Which take, whichever take, one take hangs around piece, a little take the lead dog. I don't like this complimentary piece. You gonna take the lead dog or you gonna uh, take the guy that comes that in you're giving in him? Whichever one a, hangs around longer for me is the one that I'm gonna uh, probably put on my team. I like Foreman's mm-hmm. outlook for maybe being possibly slightly more bell Better. cowish, um, but the the electric. But take this though, Big Co. I bet you Mac, Max value rises as the as the draft approaches and as the season approaches and Foreman if they keep Lamar Miller around I know how you love this quick turnaround I bet you Mac gives you better quicker return, return on, investment. on your investment than Foreman does if you get are you caught, playing the long game here for if, the first time if you get help? caught holding the flip when the market tanks you're stuck. <laughs> you could be in a bad spot. I could be. I'm gonna grab old. Hey, the, he he knows gonna, Warren Buffett. I'm gonna oh. grab. We text. <laughs> he writes. No, I thought it was letters, but <laughs> no, we text. You write letters. He said. You said he wrote carrier letter. pigeon. I guarantee he writes letters still. That's probably pretty. <laughs> he solid. does. He does. He does text as well, though. He yeah. probably has some cute girl doing the texting for him. I would assume. 
But speaking of texting, <laughs> you got billions of dollars. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking I'm taking Foreman, and I'm a hold on. I'll, I'll you can let Mac kind of have a little value increase. Foreman's value, if like I said, as soon as you see him it's running full around, full steam ahead. As soon as you see him running full around, steam ahead. You put him in a pair of cleats, and boy, that ADP's taking. People off. love Foreman. They just want to be. People want to be a part of Foreman. Yeah, they're gonna will him to be good. I guess you know I, I like Foreman. I'm not trying to argue against Foreman. No. I just I. I We've kind of been off Mac just because of all the hype, and I think I'm ready to get back in there. It was just for his rookie season. I right. just wanted to, to temper. He's not gonna. He wasn't gonna take Frank Gore's job. Like, let's be honest. Let's be real. This here. is a, basically Foreman was a guy that you had to take at the end of a first or high second last year, and Mac was a guy that you uh, actually. I guess by the time the draft yeah. was rolling around, you were probably taking. By Mac, the time like, the draft rolled around, mid, Mac mid was second. way too expensive right. to take. Yeah. So all right. Well, that's the end. I said it. Er, I said it nine or ten earlier. I had my math off. That's the end of ninety six. Is like eight twelve for Mac. So you got you're taking Mac at the end of the eighth, the beginning of the ninth round. I can't do that. Can't do it. All right. I think that'll end it for today's show. We're gonna uh, cut it here. Maybe come back with some more ADP breakdown for your pleasure. We got a lot more dudes on this list, but we're gonna call this a wrap here in around an hour and twenty minutes, so that we don't get any one star reviews for duration issues um hit us up on twitter if you feel so inclined at the ff dynasty we have individual handles at imc myers at dynasty big co at j wayne's world please go on your platform of choice hit subscribe itunes podbean google play stitcher tune in radio iheart radio please and thank you if you're on itunes scroll down and, and give us a five star review just tap the little five stars you don't even have to write anything if you don't want to uh, thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show. You've been listening to the FF Dynasties Married to the Game.